obviously we're custom packaging providers, um, but we want to speak a little bit to both sides of this because I think it's important to assess for yourself whether or not um, kind of that custom branded experience is, is going to be worth it for your company um, going forward. Um, so the, the answer as it ends up is just it depends. Uh, at the end of the day, if you're crowdfunding for something that is highly technical or is a very specific item that people are going to be looking for, um, it's likely that they're not going to be buying it for the experience of, of receiving it and kind of the, the continued experience with your brand. It's kind of a one-off type deal. Um, but on the other hand, if you're shipping something that is going to um, be leaving a more lasting impact, um, it might be a good, to, a good thing to consider um, to use custom packaging. So your main goal is to get your product to your customer safely, um, but getting it there looking great should certainly be part of that, um, that equation. So um, in this uh, webinar, we'll be citing a, a few statistics. Um, most of them come from this a dot-com distribution survey that was done um, two years ago in 2016, um, where they kind of surveyed um, online shoppers to find out how they felt about what they were ordering um, and that experience overall. So what are the, the benefits of custom packaging? Um, so custom packaging can help to showcase both the legitimacy of your business to your funders, as well as encourage customer loyalty and retention. Um, now, it's the little things that kind of that kind of work for you when it comes to shipping your packaging. Um, so in this dot-com distribution study, they found that 40% of online shoppers reported that branded packaging made them more likely to recommend a product to their friends. Um, now, as a crowdfunding um, campaign, you obviously know the kind of success that you've, you've already had with those kind of recommendations and the benefits that can provide you as a company. Um, furthermore, 61% of online shoppers said that a branded gift-like packaging experience makes that brand seem more upscale. Um, now, why would you be trying to seem more upscale? Well, it's all about kind of presenting your company in a specific light, in a specific way. Because moving forward, you're obviously going to want to keep those customers and kind of keep people engaged with your business. Um, at the end of the day, you're ending your crowdfunding campaign, putting your product out into the market, and using that custom packaging is a great way to put your best foot forward. So it's important as well that we talk a little bit about kind of what the different options are. I think, I think when people kind of get into custom packaging, they're can seem to be a lot of different choices, um, and they're absolutely right. So custom packaging covers a wide variety of things. Um, anything that could be considered packaging, obviously. So your tissue, stickers, boxes, ribbons, um, anything that you can kind of put your, your product into and then send to your customer, that all counts. Um, there are a lot of options that people might not have considered, though. Um, so poly mailers are a new kind of fad, I guess, that, are, that has come into, uh, into play with companies such as MeUndies using these. Um, to ship out their um, their underwear, um, a fantastic product, and you'd be surprised at what you can actually get kind of custom branding onto. So all of these options you can use for your company and put your logo onto it, put a special custom pattern onto it, or whatever you'd, um, you'd use. Additionally, anything that's going into that package, so um, things that people typically would, would consider to be kind of inserts or add-ons, like handwritten notes or custom postcards, are great ways to engage with the people that have funded your campaign and to show them not only that you're interested in what they have done for you, but that you're interested in keeping them on as you go forward. Um, making an impact with those, um, those kind of inserts, those hand touches, um, really makes a difference. Um, in that same dot-com distribution study, 49% of online shoppers said that premium packaging gets them more excited about opening that package. Um, and obviously, you know, why wouldn't it? It's, it's essentially like you're receiving a gift in the mail. You've put this money forward however long ago. And when it comes time to fulfilling that order, when you're sending it out to your customer, um, they're getting it almost as a surprise, right? It's not really about the money that they spent previously. It's about what they're receiving in the moment. So making that experience better for them is incredibly important. Um, so this kind of brings us to this uh, phenomenon, I guess you'd call it, which we'd call the unboxing experience. Um, so if you guys haven't yet, I would highly recommend going on YouTube searching for um, unboxing videos. And there are a plethora of different um, unboxing videos, whether it's toys, whether it's someone ordering a subscription box and unpacking each item individually. Um, for whatever reason, 
people absolutely love sharing the gift that they get. So they love seeing what they've gotten and then sharing that with other people. And people love watching that. Um, not only is it happening on YouTube, it's happening on Instagram. So um, another kind of typical method of people showcasing what they've received is through a flat lay photograph or some other variety of, of unpacking a box and taking photos of each of the individual items. Um, those are both fantastic social media platforms to capitalize on. Um, so again, more than half of online shoppers have used social media to find a photo or video of a product they're thinking about buying. Um, and after watching an unboxing video, 55% of online shoppers said they felt intrigued, followed by 41% who felt excited. So these are people that are watching these videos, engaging with this content, and then for you on your end, with that custom packaging, that's, that's essentially organic marketing. You're giving them the opportunity to share something with their friends, with the people that they engage with on social media, um, and then that can therefore influence your campaign and your company moving forward. Um, at the end of the day, receiving a gift is a fantastic feeling, and that's what getting a delivery can feel like with custom branded packaging. Um, sharing that experience with others has honestly become second nature to people. So four out of 10 consumers would share an image of a delivery if it arrived in premium packaging. Um, now that's a survey of online shoppers and people that have been, uh, you know, obviously purchasing, purchasing things online, but that's exactly where we're kind of going as an e-commerce society. Um, there's less engagement with the actual physical retail brand of the store, and there's so much more engagement online via social media. So when you are shipping that item to them, you've really got to think about how you can capitalize on that, um, not in like a taking advantage kind of way, but in a way that helps them to share um, what they've received and genuinely share their excitement for what you've done. Um, and again, this goes back to you don't necessarily need to rely on a pretty external package um, if you don't have the, the kind of collateral or, or the money to, to go on, on you know, a massive order of custom boxes. You can use those handwritten notes. You can use something like tasteful inside the box to really give them the experience that you know, they've made a, a worthwhile investment in your company. And I guess finally, um, I think that's important to us, um, but we, we, we also think it's important for a lot of businesses that are kind of coming up and coming in right now. Um, sustainability is, is a big part of a lot of companies' kind of brand values moving forward. Um, so how can you think about sustainability when it comes to your packaging, which is obviously what we're talking about today, um, and also the sustainability that you're kind of putting into your, your items? Um, well, the, the first thing is honestly, if, if you're currently out there marketing as a sustainable product, you, you really need to make sure that you're matching that message all through your supply chain. Um, so it's not just about kind of, you know, making that, that, that recyclable bamboo bag that you're shipping out. Um, it's also important that whatever you're shipping that in is going to be eco-friendly or sustainable, um, and that you're kind of thinking about all aspects of what you're putting out there into the environment. Um, now, the, the major contributor to waste uh, of packaging is often just excess packaging. Um, when, you're, when you're putting together kind of your item, A, you want to make sure that you're only wrapping in whatever it needs to be wrapped in because that's not only helping the environment without creating so much waste, but it's also helping your brand because the more efficient you can be with your bottom line, um, obviously the better it's going to end up for you as a company. If you don't need to spend money on a ton of packaging, you don't have to, you know? Um, not only does it help the environment, it helps your bottom line. So, how can you make those packaging choices eco-friendly? Um, there's a few different ways you can go about this. Um, a typical kind of option is to use recycled goods. So a lot of the, a lot of the packaging that's put out there currently is paper-based um, or cardboard-based. And there's a lot of great places where you can get recycled cardboard boxes, recycled paper um, to wrap your items in as well. Um, you could take it a step further and go fully biodegradable, um, or you can Take it easy and, and just simply eliminate items like plastic wrap. Um, even that much can, can do wonders. Um, and then finally, I think we, we touched on this a little bit, or, or I, I touched on it a little bit, because obviously I've been the only one talking for the last few minutes here, but um, the social impact is incredibly important because not only does you, do your, your environmental choices um, benefit you know, the earth, but it also sets in stone your brand values. Um, and your commitment to making the world a better place. It, it sounds cheesy, but honestly, brands are no longer these kind of faceless corporations. 
Um, we've seen it time and time again that new companies starting up, they, they have a set of values and that can end up defining them throughout their growth. Um, and, and it's important for you as a kind of crowdfunding campaign to be thinking about the kind of longevity of your brand. So not just thinking about it as this one-off moment, but engaging with your customers moving forward, setting in stone brand values that they can engage with as well and that they'll want to continue to support moving forwards. So that's kind of the uh, that's kind of a broad overview of the packaging side of things. Um, obviously, if you guys have any questions at the end of this, um, you can packaging exist out there where you can get that kind of stuff, um, or generally anything related to the kind of social media side of the unboxing experience. I've had a lot of experience with this kind of stuff. Um, I think it's an, an, an insane new trend, um, and, and absolutely love talking about it. So with that, I'll check it back over to Tim. Um, to talk a little bit more of the logistical side. Um, yeah, back to you, Tim. Hey, thanks very much, Ben. Yeah, just touching on the sustainability side, I bought uh, some uh, a pair of shoes online the other day, and it actually came in a, a grand total of three boxes. Who would have known that shoes could break? <laughs> um, so that kind of actually annoyed me, and it, and it, it does speak back to your brand um, about getting those types of things right, and especially with your crowdfunding campaign. Um, you're making that first impression, your backers need to be wild, so getting that packaging right uh, is essential. So I guess um, what I'm going to sort of touch on is, is actually how to go out and access that, what the um, different processes and, and how actually best to get that, and then some common pitfalls that you uh, may come across along the way uh, and sort of how to avoid those. So um, the different options of where you sort of get your custom packaging from, and I will be talking more along the, the custom or bespoke packaging side of things. I'm sure uh, you all know how to go out and find uh, plain brown cardboard boxes, but um, I guess just quickly to touch on uh, the process, uh, an overview of that. So you first need to select the type of packaging uh, that, you're, that you're after, uh, work out the best place, uh, the best cost, best quality, um, to get it from and then uh, submit your design dimensions etc get a proof and quote uh, con confirmation and go to print and then you need to ship receive those and then the fun begins uh, you get to begin packaging your products so it's pretty clear that that's a, a pretty long process with multiple uh, avenues multiple departments uh, and this can turn into a, a very drawn out uh, and time-consuming ordeal so um, We'll jump in and go through the different options. So a local supplier or, or your local packaging company. So uh, the pros of this is that you're going to get uh, much more communication face to face. You could possibly even go into the showroom, uh, see exactly the type of products uh, that, that you can get, samples, et cetera. Uh, and that's going to be mean more likely that you're going to get the outcome that you desire. Uh, some, I guess, cons or negatives of this is the number one thing is it's going to be more costly. Uh, a lot of these local packaging suppliers um, are not doing their own production. It would be a very rare occurrence of that. So their overheads, et cetera, uh, are much higher. Uh, so it will come at a higher price point. Uh, and then also time, they're outsourcing that packaging. You're talking to them, they're talking to their supplier. So there's a bit more of a process to go through. Um, MOQ, uh, I'm going to touch a little bit more on that in just a second, but MOQ essentially is uh, minimum order quantity. So um, if you want to get uh, only 200 boxes, for example, a lot of companies will have a minimum order quantity of 1,000. Uh, meaning that you can't access certain uh, types of packaging without ordering in bulk. So with local suppliers and packaging companies with custom products, uh, it's going to be much harder to get the quantity that you're after unless you are ordering uh, by the thousand. Uh, creative design uh, or branding agencies. So uh, obviously the pros of this is it's going to be really professionally done. Uh, you're going to get exactly the product that you want, probably even better product than you first set out for. Uh, so that's a massive plus. And you sort of outsource the process. So uh, you're sort of handing over the packaging uh, process and the branding and design of all of that uh, to a professional team. With that uh, is also kind of a, a negative as well, because you're still going to have to deal with that creative team, uh, approval of the proofs. So the back and forth uh, emails and phone calls will still take place. 
uh, and the process is still going to take a while. Uh, the other uh, big, uh, I guess, not problem, but negative of using uh, an agency like this, especially as a crowdfunding uh, campaign where you're just starting out again, it's going to be the cost. It's going to cost quite a lot to do that. Um, so it's something certainly to be wary of. Uh, lastly, online platforms. Uh, this is where essentially you can do everything uh, online. So you take care of the process. You can design and order uh, everything through the online platform. Um, most of those platforms uh, also have design help too. Uh, so that's not going to be a problem. It's quick, it's seamless, and you most of the time are going to get the product that you're after. Some negatives of that obviously is that the offering uh, is going to be slightly limited. Uh, you're not going to have a big warehouse or showroom to choose from. So if you are after something very in particular, um, it may not be your friend. So each option has its merits uh, and its limitations. Uh, but I think also the thing to consider here, and Ryan's going to go a little bit more in depth uh, into the shipping side of things, but you've got to get your packaging somewhere, right? If you're uh, outsourcing your fulfillment, you need to get your packaging uh, to their warehouses or their fulfillment centers. If you're doing it from your own distribution center, you need to get the packaging sent there. So thinking about uh, the cost of actually getting that packaging to where uh, you're packaging your products is certainly something worth considering. Uh, I guess uh, to point out uh, the partnership between Easy Ship and No Issue uh, is, is a great thing because we do everything online. Uh, and then we can get that product shipped directly to easy ship centers. Uh, so it sort of streamlines that process. Um, just really quickly, and we'd love your answers here. Uh, if you could put those in the chat, we've been uh, discussing this internally as a team for some time now, uh, what the most important uh, aspect for, for businesses out there when it comes to selecting packaging. So um, sustainability, price, uh, the speed of delivery, uh, quality, or all of the above, especially for crowdfunding campaigns. Um, it, it's very interesting to see where that sort of lies, whether it's just a straight up bottom line thing or, or where that sits. So we'd love some input from you guys there on that. Um, just quickly to explain uh, minimum order quantities and, and the effects of this um, a little more. So uh, especially with crowdfunding campaigns, um, the assumably you're going to be ordering uh, in a lower level of quantity. So you are going to see a, a slightly higher price uh, point for that. It's the same with anything. If you buy in bulk, you'll get a cheaper price. Um, but actually finding and sourcing the right product uh, that you want uh, at the MOQ that you desire, it, it is one of the big headaches that we've seen with crowdfunding campaigns. Uh, so certainly something to watch out for when you are selecting your uh, packaging partner. Um, just a, a really quick interesting stat from the same dot-com distribution uh, study that Ben mentioned before. 44% of customers say that when a product arrives uh, in awesome packaging, uh, it reinforces their confidence in how much they were willing to spend in the first place. So uh, your backers, as Ben stated, have already spent the money. Uh, they're now waiting for uh, and, and really excited for that product to arrive at their door. Uh, so making that an experience where they say, hey, I'm really glad I backed these guys. This is a really exciting uh, venture moving forward. They're going to tell their friends, uh, and it's going to make that campaign uh, much, much more successful. So uh, the nuts and bolts uh, of sort of the process itself, uh, creating and sort of submitting your design and actually getting the product that you, that you want. Uh, so colors and materials, especially colors, are, are a really big deal. Uh, if you submit your colors and you go through the proofs and then your packaging arrives and your logo is actually uh, a yellow instead of a dark green, that's going to be a disaster, right? Uh, so getting that right uh, is essential. The best thing to do, and most companies will deal with Pantones or hex codes, so matching uh, the exact color that you want to your Pantone or hex chart uh, is key. Uh, and then obviously as well, uh, lead times, if this goes uh, wrong, uh, you're going to be shipping out uh, your products in the fastest type of packaging you can find and you will have spent uh, all of that money on packaging, uh, which is still en route. So um, 
most companies will have expedition available again this is going to be a, a pricey ordeal so giving yourself plenty of time preparing the process and making sure uh, that your packaging is getting there with plenty of time uh, is incredibly important and uh, I'm sure Ryan will touch on sort of the fulfillment side of things and how best to go about that um, but yeah we've partnered with uh, numerous 3PLs that will help with that process and, and make sure that the fulfillment side of things is um, tip top. So hopefully that was uh, informative about the, the packaging side of things and there's some takeaways um, from that. Please shoot any questions through to us uh, that we can answer in terms of packaging. Um, but I'll, I'll throw it over to Ryan and he's going to sort of dive into the, the actual, once you've got your packaging and your products ready to go, uh, getting those out to your backers successfully. So um, I'm excited to hear this and we'll, we'll throw it over. All right, thanks, Tim. Uh, thanks, Ben. So uh, just really quick, uh, EasyShip is a uh, software platform that allows companies, uh, both in the crowdfunding space and traditional e-commerce space, uh, to be able to uh, ship worldwide. We have over 120 courier solutions on our platform. Rates are already loaded in. Uh, the negotiated highly discounted rates. Uh, we also have guaranteed tax and duties. Um, we can also uh, do estimations and fully prepaid tax and duties. Um, so we're going to review today just not really necessarily anything about uh, easy ship, but some of the things that we've uh, come across uh, from an industry perspective um, when, when it comes to shipping and um, you know, the fulfillment side. Uh, so we work and are partnered both with Indiegogo, Kickstarter, um, as well as post-campaign companies like uh, Backerkit and Crowdox. Um, and uh, in the last um, six months, we've worked with projects that have raised uh, anywhere from you know, tens of thousands to millions of dollars. Uh, we've shipped to more than 100, uh, actually it's 120 com uh, 117 com uh, countries, excuse me. And uh, you know, the, the distance traveled is quite extensive. Um, a big thing that we're finding in, in uh, the crowdfunding community is understanding what the total cost of the shipment is prior to launching. Um, that way you can have good, good shipping estimates at the time of the campaign. So some of the questions we're going to go through, um, trying to understand what questions to ask uh, different vendors when you're looking at uh, what goes into preparing and shipping and the rest of it. Um, how to plan, uh, that includes any expenses um, as well as a strategy. Um, and then we're just going to review a quick success story we've had with uh, Waverly Labs, which is an Indiegogo uh, campaign. All right, so when you're looking at fulfillment, there are um, obviously many strategies that you can uh, look into. Um, we've kind of narrowed it down into three that we continuously come across uh, with questions, and uh, these are the three most common. Um, so those are going to be kind of a uh, approach that comes, uh, the company will come and say, oh yeah, we can do a uh, flat rate. Uh, it's going to be, you know, $15 for every shipment anywhere in the world. Um, there, there are some, some issues related with that. Usually there's limited to no tracking uh, outside of uh, the U.S. Um, there's a potential loss of money when it comes to lost shipments because there's no tracking, um, as well as understanding uh, the $15 or whatever a single rate to the global uh, marketplace uh, is a bit misleading where uh, key markets are traditionally more expensive when you're looking at uh, places like Latin America uh, versus somewhere in the UK, for example, uh, could be you know, $60, $70, $100 just shipped to Latin America, whereas the UK could be uh, $15, you know, $8 to $15. Um, I know averaging it out makes sense, but when you really see that you know, a large portion of your campaign is in Latin America as well as maybe the Middle East, um, that $15 then will throw off uh, after the campaign is completed and your actual cost will be uh, much greater. Uh, next um, strategy is kind of a central uh, fulfillment. There are two options when it comes to central fulfillment. So this is looking at a single, single place uh, you're distributing from uh, Usually it's going to be Hong Kong. A lot of uh, the campaigns that we've worked with have been manufacturing in uh, China or in Asia. Uh, so there's two options here. We have a direct injection option as well as just a uh, single courier solution or multi-courier solution. So with direct injection, what this is, is we're going to be doing all the picking and packing in the centralized location, whether that's in Hong Kong, Europe, or the U.S. 
Um, traditionally, as I mentioned, it's going to be Hong Kong. And we actually label everything, and we can do either a uh, C, Air, or Train. Um, and when I say we, just in the, in the industry, uh, this is an option. Uh, what this is going to do for you is it's going to lower your total cost. Uh, you don't have import into different markets as a uh, company, so you're not paying for the freight import, um, and you're not paying that uh, tax and duty for the import. Um, also, for places like the United States, Australia, and other key markets, you're actually going to limit your tax and duties, if not completely erase them into those markets. Um, so even if you're doing a freight uh, import via direct injection, it's going to be taxed on the single shipment. So for each shipment to each end user, uh, as long as the threshold or the total retail value of those sh single shipments does not reach $800 for the U.S. and uh, 1000 uh, uh, Australian dollars for Canada or for Australia, um, there will be no tax and duty due by your backers. Um, as well as in most, most of these areas outside of the U.S., mainly Hong Kong, there's going to be no sorting fees and usually no storage fees associated with it. Um, and then if you're looking at the other option when, a, when you're looking at central fulfillment, um, it's just using a, you know, standard couriers. Uh, so you can, again, lower your total cost. Using a single fulfillment center uh, can be a little bit uh, less complicated. You don't have to manage multiple locations. Um, there is going to be a longer delivery lead time, of course, with both of these options. And traditionally, with uh, crowdfunding, we're finding that that's not going to be uh, an issue. Um, the last uh, last option that we're finding is is quite popular is looking at multiple fulfillment locations. Uh, so this is setting up a uh, fulfillment center in Asia, Europe, maybe Australia, and the U.S. So hitting all the key markets of your campaign. Um, there's obviously great uh, benefit for the tax and duty uh, as well as lead time. Uh, so if you have a uh, great number of customers in the EU. Uh, being able to ship to your European customers without having any tax and duty due by them uh, obviously is is great, uh, quite beneficial. There's no uh, tech, uh, no wait on the lead time. It's a much quicker end-to-end -end solution. Um, now, of course, you have to get your product to the European Fulfillment Center, uh, which then has an import cost for the company importing. Uh, it's usually anywhere from 15 to 21 percent. Um, of the manufacturing cost. So you still have that, that slower lead time because you still have to import, but the end user is not experiencing any tax and duty. Um, so it's quite a uh, you know, good solution for companies and, uh, that have a large market in a particular uh, area. Um, so those are the three most common that we're seeing. Um, when we're looking at choosing your fulfillment location, kind of mentioned earlier that uh, we're seeing that uh, some of our customers and, and Companies in the marketplace are manufacturing in Asia, and they're looking to fill in one of two areas, and it's usually either in either Hong Kong or China, or in the United States. Uh, so if you're looking at these two markets, uh, the benefits to Hong Kong is you know, importing in from Asia or anywhere uh, as a tax free tax free port. Uh, so you as a, a company and a creator won't have any taxes or duties due upon import into Hong Kong. Uh, it's a central location uh, and the biggest hub in the, in the world. Uh, when it comes to uh, outbound uh, shipping and fulfillment. There's simple direct injection options via train into the EU, uh, sea and air uh, into all the major markets. Uh, the pick and pack cost is greatly reduced. Um, there is going to be a, a longer delivery lead time, though, uh, because you're going to be looking at different solutions. Again, um, this is mainly into markets like the, uh, the EU and the US. So when we're looking at the US, uh, there is obviously going to be a, a much shorter lead time if you're fulfilling in the U.S. The majority of our uh, customers and the campaigns we speak to, uh, the largest market is going to be North America. Uh, so you do have a shorter fulfillment and uh, delivery lead time. But again, if you're taking end-to-end, -end, you still have to import your goods to the uh, United States Fulfillment Center, so that can also add on uh, time. Another great benefit to fulfilling in the U.S. is you don't have to set up the fulfillment in the United States uh, post-campaign. Uh, so uh, you've already had your fulfillment partner set up. You can directly go into standard e-commerce distribution uh, without having to do uh, a secondary import. Whereas in Hong Kong, you most likely do not want to fulfill long-term for your e-commerce business out of Hong Kong 
and most likely be moving it into either the US or the UK, or excuse me, into the EU. Um, there's limited direct injection uh, options, although there still are. Uh, you still, we still have the ability, companies still have the ability to do direct injection. It's just uh, more limited. It's not a very common uh, practice out of the United States. Um, obviously, as a company and a creator, you're going to have to pay for that import, uh, as well as the costs associated with uh, the tax and duty. Um, and then the fulfillment costs are quite higher uh, than in uh, Hong Kong. So all in all, it's, it's when you're looking at the, 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 the benefits for a particular campaign, we're finding that uh, from a cost perspective as well as a um, you know, successful delivery, Hong Kong has been the, the, the more successful area to fill out of. Um, U.S. is obviously a great option as well. It just depends on your, um, you know, your, your, your model and what you're looking to accomplish. So if we look at the, the main costs, okay, so um, as we mentioned, there are a few different options uh, when you're looking at what's available on the market. You have the flat rate, which is, hey, it's $15, ship anywhere in the world. Uh, you can look at utilizing multiple couriers. So that's going to be, you know, your UPS, FedEx, your international couriers like DPD for uh, EU, Aramax for the Middle East, um, and so on. And then you have a single courier. A lot of companies that we speak with in the beginning Say, oh yeah, I did my last campaign and we used you know, UPS. Um, so that's great. UPS is a fantastic provider. They have a good global presence. Um, but we've identified that that's uh, usually a quite expensive solution as well as looking at uh, different markets. There may be a better uh, solution that has better delivery rates. Um, so those are the three you know, main options. And of course, you have your direct injection and these are more customized uh, options that everybody in the market has available. And then for fulfillment, uh, you have uh, traditional costs associated with fulfillment. So that's going to be your sorting fees, um, your acceptance fees. Uh, so this is going to be when, the, when, the, when your product is ready to be delivered to the uh, fulfillment center. Uh, they're going to charge any sorting fees to go through and count and, 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 and stock, um, as well as a lot of fulfillment centers do charge acceptance fees, uh, traditionally in the United States and in the EU. Um, any packaging you're going to need. Uh, so that's looking at uh, both um, the you know, different tissue papers and kitting and things like that, as well as the actual shipment container. So there may be two containers, a retail box and then a ship, shipping carton. Um, and then there's a setup fee. Uh, the setup fee is getting you integrated into the warehouse management system, uh, setting up the inventory and stock levels and the software applications that you'll be utilizing with that particular fulfillment center. So there are obviously more costs uh, when it when it comes to uh, looking at the cost of shipping and fulfillment, um, but these are the main ones to really uh, identify when talking to a company. Um, you know, do you have sorting fees? Are there set of fees, acceptance fees, uh, things like that? Obviously, long term you have storage and, and so on. Um, but a lot of companies when they first start uh, speaking with a fulfillment partner, they say, "Oh yeah, it's a, here's the pick and pack rate." Uh, and then they don't get into, oh, yeah, well, there's an acceptance fee and the setup's $1,500 or $5,000, and then there's a sorting fee of $2 per item. So just make sure to ask about uh, all of the fees associated with uh, the fulfillment uh, partner, as well as um, obviously your pick and pack rate um, and, and any labor rates. So, tax and duties. Uh, this is a question that comes up quite uh, often, and um, there seems to be a lot of misconceptions in the market. Um, so, are tax and duties needed? Uh, yes, tax and duties are always uh, going to be something that will come up when you're shipping internationally, and you have backers that are in areas where the tax threshold is quite low. Uh, so, this traditionally is going to be uh, the, the EU. Um, the, the, I would say, on an average, to say it's a threshold of about fifteen to twenty dollars. Now, that's not uh, you know, every country has a little bit of a different threshold, uh, but the majority of these countries have a very, very low threshold. So, when you're looking at tax and duty, yes, uh, when you do an import into a country, not all packages will be, um, uh, I guess, quote unquote, caught at the customs uh, point. So, there will be a high percentage of shipments that will go through without having or, or being flagged for collection of tax and duty. Um, so this is always a gamble. Uh, customers in the EU know this, and so they will 
understand that there's a potential for tax and duty being paid, uh, but there's also a potential to go through without uh, any flag and they won't have to pay anything. Um, to that end, there are options to look at, which are DDP and DDU. So this is going to be looking at if it's prepaid taxes or uh, unpaid. Um, so the prepay, your backers won't have to pay any taxes upon delivery, regardless of flagged or not. Obviously, the downside of that is even if it wasn't going to be flagged uh, as a, uh, a creator or maker, you will be paying uh, the tax up front for every single shipment. Um, and then the DDU, of course, that's going to be collected upon time of delivery. Okay. Um, a lot of people in the market say, uh, I've been hearing uh, from uh, different customers of ours that they've been told that shipping from you know, Hong Kong or China or you know, different regions, there's no tax and duty due uh, to certain areas. Uh, it's completely false. Um, there will be some uh, regions and areas, depending on the actual product, where you have uh, limited uh, tax and duty or no tax and very low duty. Or maybe there's not neither, uh, but it really depends on the product. You can't do a blanket statement saying that uh, in all areas there's there's not going to be any tax and duty due if you ship out of this particular region. Uh, so always know that that's something to understand. Okay. So backers always have expectations, and as I'm sure everybody knows, um, uh, those are going to be ranging everything from. Where's my, where's my product, to communication on the status of manufacturing, um, and the rest of it. Uh, so once your product is ready to be fulfilled um, and shipped, uh, there are companies out there that, uh, like EasyShip, that allow you to uh, provide very detailed tracking updates to your backers with branded tracking pages and the rest of it. Uh, what this will do is allow your, your backers to uh, have full visibility into where the package is at all times of the shipment. Now again, there are uh, solutions on the market that don't have tracking, or they'll say there's no availability, it's impossible to track when you're importing into these different regions. Uh, again, that's just not the case. Uh, so you just need to make sure that those that you're looking at tracking options uh, so that you can properly update your backers because uh, sending a package without uh, understanding of where it is will create a customer service nightmare <laughs> from, from uh, your end. Um, emailed updates um, and shipping notifications is a big thing that keeps coming up. Uh, we'll work with companies that in the past had worked with another uh, company and uh, they said, oh, there's tracking updates, but it was very limited and there were no notifications uh, to their backers. Uh, so there is a constant flow of customer service and chats on the um, you know, Kickstarter or um, Indiegogo uh, chat section. Uh, so you want to make sure that when you're looking at solutions, uh, again, I can't say it enough, look for tracked solutions. Um, you know, when we speak to companies that have, have done a non-tracked solution in the past, uh, the reason that they're speaking to us is because uh, it didn't work well for them, and they're looking for a provider that can provide them end-to-end -end tracking to uh, every country uh, where they have a backer. So really, I would always recommend looking for solutions that are um, trackable. Uh, as Easy Ship, we do have uh, untrackable solutions that are available to you. So if you want to look at extremely low-cost uh, shipping solutions, we do have that as an option. But again, we, we highly recommend against it. So a little bit about Easy Ship. I know I've kind of been going over some of the uh, industry. Um, as I had mentioned before, we're we're linked up to over 120 solutions. Uh, our discounts range anywhere from uh, 60 to 70 percent off of retail, um, and uh, we have global fulfillment and global fulfillment experts. As I mentioned, we have offices in uh, the EU, Australia, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, um, U.S. And then uh, Taiwan is our is one of our um, development uh, offices. So you have an opportunity to work with somebody either in your region or your biggest distribution uh, area is. As I also mentioned with EasyShip, we have guaranteed tax and duties. Uh, so what this does is allow you pre-campaign to understand what the, the, both the full landed shipment cost will be, as well as any tax and duties uh, that may be due upon time of delivery or prepaying them uh, up front. Uh, we'll, we'll provide you access and visibility into both of those via the EasyShip platform. We also integrate with all the major e-commerce uh, platforms, 
so what that means is post campaign when you launch your Shopify or your Magento, Big Commerce, Weebly, Amazon, eBay, wh whichever form of e-commerce and maybe all forms, uh, and you're doing an omni-channel approach, we're completely integrated in with all of those providers. So we have an in-cart solution that will show uh, dynamic rates as well as dynamic guaranteed tax and duties upon checkout uh, so that your customers have the options that are available, meaning the fastest, the cheapest, and the best value. So if they want to overnight something and they want to pay that difference, they can do that, and they're going to see exactly what the total rent cost, including tax and duty, will be. We also have a centralized dashboard. So what this is good for is your customer service team to be able to um, understand where all packages are at all times. Uh, so you can enter in any metadata into our search uh, platform, and it will pull up the shipment and any and all information associated with that shipment, as well as documents, um, import documents, uh, as well as, of course, tracking updates. We have the quoting feature, uh, which allows you to run quotes, uh, which, of course, you can utilize pre-campaign to understand uh, what your costs will be into specific markets. Um, and then, again, it's a good way to manage everything from a single point. So that's very top level on uh, kind of what EasyShip is. Uh, we're partnered with uh, warehouse partners throughout the world. Uh, it's not something we make money on. Really what it allows us to do is to identify your product, what your strategy is, and then present some options of some partners that we've gone through and audited uh, that are in the market. Um, and you can make the decision based on what your needs are and the, the likes and dislikes of certain providers. And our, our shipping flow is, you know, we can send our goods to our warehouses, uh, warehouse partners, if you will. Um, those partners are in the US, EU, Hong Kong, Singapore, Australia. Uh, biggest uh, warehouse area or, or fulfillment area is going to be Hong Kong for crowdfunding. Um, you simply upload your orders uh, either via you know, a CSV or direct link to uh, one of the platforms. You choose the different couriers that you want, whether that's um, you know, a single courier solution or use, utilizing multiple couriers or a direct injection. Um, then the warehouse does the rest. The warehouse is going to receive your items, pick, pack, and ship. And then your customers are getting the automatic notifications once the label is generated. The shipment is being prepared and will be shipped soon. And then you track all your shipments. Uh, like I said, we can provide branded uh, tracking pages for your customers so they can go to a single page that's branded as your own and see exactly where their shipment is. Um, one of our successes, it was a large, uh, large campaign. Uh, they had over 27,000 orders. Um, they had destinations all over the globe. And they utilized our platform, and we put together um, a, a strategy that both, both included direct injection as well as multi-courier solution. And this was quite an, a complex campaign because there were three batteries, lithium batteries, that were associated with a single shipment of a single product. Uh, so we had to identify specific couriers that would allow for um, the shipment of uh, lithium-ion batteries uh, that one was a charger charging other batteries, so it falls under PI-965, um, which is a, a hazardous good, uh, very difficult to ship. So we had to contact multiple couriers and identify the solutions available. So we do all that work for, we did all that work for Waverly Labs, presented them with the opportunities and the options that were uh, available to them. And then throughout the campaign, uh, they were able to save uh, just over, uh, well, just under actually uh, 80K uh, USD using us compared to the other solutions that were presented on the market. Um, so we're really proud about that particular one. We also have many other campaigns that we, we work with on a, on a daily basis. Uh, this just happens to be one of the larger campaigns that we've worked uh, with over the last six months. Uh, so again, that's, that's kind of an uh, overview of uh, fulfillment, shipping, that's at sales at easyship.com um, and, uh, and at easyship.com as well. I think right now what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, open up to uh, Q&A, go through any uh, questions that come up. Um, and uh, yeah, so Ben, Tim, are you still on the line? Sure I am, Ryan. Thanks very much for that. Um, so we've had a couple of questions uh, from Jesse and Bruce there already. I think there was one there perhaps for, for you, Brian. Yeah, so the, the question came up, Bruce, uh, do you have any comments on the new 25% report from China? Um, so I'm not uh, quite aware of them. We don't ship out of China. 
so that being said, we really focused on uh, staying in the Hong Kong market. We have a lot of companies that have asked us to go into China. Uh, we've made the decision both from a um, company as well as a strategical a strategic position to stay in Hong Kong, um, just because there are a lot of uh, potential issues when fulfilling out of China, uh, both with the couriers that are available, um, as well as like this, different tariffs and, and uh, regulations that are changing on a daily basis <laughs> when it comes to shipping from China to the US. Um, from, <clears throat> from our side, Bruce, uh, it, it doesn't affect us per se, but I believe the tariffs are imposed on goods which contain techni techno technological advancements. Oh, great. Thanks, Ben. So one of the things that's really interesting, you know, and why Easy Ship and No Issue have become such great partners is, you know, we, we're able to help with the end-to-end uh, -end fulfillment and logistics um, and utilizing, a, uh, you know, the partnership between Easy Ship and No Issue, it allows us to uh, really ensure the, the long-term success of these campaigns. Uh, when working with uh, No Issue, the companies are not only uh, doing a uh, crowdfunding campaign, but then streamlining into a standardized e-commerce uh, play is quite uh, streamlined and successful just because of that, uh, that seamless unbacking experience and the branding that goes along with it. Uh, so we're really excited to be, to be working with No Issue and um, I know we're going to be doing some, some more events in the future as well uh, kind of around different aspects of the uh, packaging as well as fulfillment uh, portions of crowdfunding. Yeah, absolutely. I, I guess just to touch on that as well, and it sort of goes back to uh, a few comments that you had there, Jesse. Um, Easy Ship and No Issue both serve uh, a global market. So, initial uh, campaign, and then you're starting to have a, uh, with e commerce, uh, if you don't have a global outlook for your product, you really are sort of selling yourself short. So, being able to uh, distribute and also tie in with all of the packaging uh, requirements that you need, the seamless sort of flow between Easy Ship and our partnership um, really plays in your favor. You can get packaging to distribution centers uh, worldwide. Uh, and just because you may be packaging or shipping in the US, it's not going to limit your activities uh, in the Europe region or Asia. Uh, you can still have a, a very consistent uh, brand message and packaging by using uh, no issue and easy ship. So we're, we're very excited um, to be partnered with easy ship. And um, as Ryan says, we'll, we'll do some other things in the future. And there's some really exciting things coming out uh, between the two companies as well. Yeah, and Jesse, uh, thanks for the question there. I'm not sure if I get this right. Most companies make the products in China um, and then ship to Hong Kong and distribute around the world from Hong Kong. Uh, that's correct. So the distribution channel from China into the Hong Kong um, uh, you know, uh, tax-free zone is seamless and very low cost. Uh, so what we're finding is uh, picking up you know, multiple truckloads will be a couple hundred dollars uh, to ship into the Hong Kong fulfillment region. Um, and then we can do global distribution, whether it's a direct injection uh, or standard courier uh, shipments from the Hong Kong fulfillment uh, warehouse uh, seamlessly. And the, and the reason is it's the main and the biggest hub in the world. And so the majority of the couriers that, um, like all the couriers, in fact, that, that uh, are utilized globally are there. Uh, direct injection routes into uh, the different regions uh, is quite quick. Uh, so going in, utilizing like a sea shipment into the United States, uh, into uh, Long Beach or Los Angeles, if you will, uh, is, is quite quick uh, and, and seamless, um, as well as in the EU. Uh, there are train solutions uh, direct from uh, different areas within the EU. Uh, you can also do sea into Australia and things like that. Uh, so really the Hong Kong uh, play, if you will, is allowing companies to get the best services that are available from a distribution perspective uh, from a single point. Uh, from a long-term perspective, when you're looking at launching your brand in uh, to the e-commerce uh, market going you know, after the, the campaign, uh, I would recommend looking at where your biggest backers are, where your market is, and then de de determining which of these regions is the best to set up your 
uh, fulfillment center because traditionally it may not be uh, the best place for e-commerce to be uh, doing all fulfillment in Hong Kong. Uh, there are companies that maintain that. We have, we have customers that are still utilizing our Hong Kong fulfillment partners uh, and uh, continuing to build their e-commerce presence. Uh, but again, uh, we can always help with that consultation along the way um, and introduce you to different fulfillment partners that are in the United States and the EU uh, as needed. And yes, absolutely. The question is, can we uh, wait to discuss more? If anybody has uh, a need or would like to discuss more, I'm going to throw my email up here in the chat. Um, and I think uh, Ben and Tim as well. Yeah, I'll put my up right now too. Yeah, if any questions ever come up, feel free to reach out to uh, Ben, Tim, myself, uh, Stephen as well. Uh, there was a question asked about the uh, actual presentation. Uh, yeah, we can definitely send the presentation to everyone that's attended as well. We'll, we'll put it up on a, a, a site so that everybody has access to that as well. Um, but if there are more questions, we would like to go more granular with, with both No Issue and Easy Ship. Uh, please let us know. Um, we're more than happy to spend the time. So before we wrap up, are there any, any other questions that anybody has, uh, you know, that, that, that may benefit the, the group? Thanks, Jesse. All right. So from my end, thank you so much, uh, Ben and Tim uh, and Stephen, for, for taking the time today. Uh, we're, we're all in uh, different areas, so it's, it's been great working with you guys. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, I really appreciate the, the time and, and effort you guys are putting in as well. Yeah. Uh, likewise, from the No Issue side, uh, thank you very much to Ryan and Stephen. We're extremely excited uh, to be working with you guys moving forward, um, and it's been awesome uh, having you guys listen in. And um, yeah, all the very best with your with your campaigns, um, and hopefully we'll speak more uh, over email. Thanks so much. Take care, everybody. Thanks, guys.